Alright, what's up YouTube? So for those of you that are 556 fans slash 223, I'm going to go over what I feel like what my favorite rounds are and what I would stockpile and for the reason why or what I would use for home defense or anything like that. So, based on scenario driven stuff and you know in the house, outside the house, you know, choose whatever you want. You know, over penetration can injure other people. You don't want to accidentally have some collateral damage. So, you decide based on your stuff. I'm just deciding overall what I want or what I would choose and the reasons why. So let's start off with, I think, the budget and the most cheapest round that there is. So I don't have a box for it, but this is Gold Bear 62 grain hollow point. I like this stuff because during a normal market and there's not an ammo scare, it's about 30 cents a round. I've seen it as low as 28 cents a round. And it's pretty good stuff. I will say that this is nowhere near as accurate as some of the M855 green tip stuff, SS109, or the, the you know XM193 stuff that I've shot. It's not as accurate. I'm looking at like two inch groups out of a good barrel, good gun. But I think that the ballistics, as far as it being a hollow point and the terminal ballistics, it's going to work out well for you. So this is 223, 62 grain hollow point it's definitely not brass it looks brass but it's brass washed steel case love the stuff if i was on a budget this is what i would stockpile for shtf you know it's going to go bang it's russian unless it's tool <laughs> here here come the haters all right the probably my least favorite round to stockpile is the green tip now this is what everybody wants what the military has it's got penetration I'm going to say, based on everything that I've seen on ballistic gels and penetration and all that other stuff, I don't think the penetration is good enough on this to make a difference and that the terminal ballistics and what it does to soft tissue, from most of the results I've seen, now I've seen some results on ballistic gel, it's, it's racked it up. But what I will say about this is sometimes this is very devastating to soft, heart, soft tissue, but it's so inconsistent. Like, it... Just get on YouTube and start looking at what this stuff does to ballistic gel, and you'll see some good results, some bad results. It's very inconsistent, and I want something that's more consistent. The next thing I would get, plus this costs more money for most of the time because this is what everybody wants because that's what the military uses, right? Your average civilians, this is what they want. So it costs more money. So to me, I wouldn't spend the money on that. If I was budget-minded I wanted something that was brass, I would probably go with the XM193. This is American Eagle. I like this stuff. This is a favorite of like people like James Jaeger. They'll talk about how it flips and yaws and things like that when it hits soft tissue. And I think that with 5.56, five, you're not getting like incredible amounts of, of penetration anyway. So if that is your like biggest priority, it probably wouldn't I probably still wouldn't go with a green tip. I'd probably go with this 55 grain stuff. You're saving money. You can also use it for range ammo. It's good range ammo. It really doesn't matter what twist rate of barrel, whether you're 1 in 7, 1 in 8, 1 in 9, if you got an older AR. This stuff works very well. So this is probably what I would use. Now, and I don't want to get too deep in 223 versus 556. Five, I'll let somebody else argue that one. The next round that I would choose, uh, based on cost, is the Marine Corps round, the, their favorite round, or was their favorite round. I think a lot of the Marine Corps now are finally switching over to the M855A1. But this is a Mark 318. It's the open tip match rear pe penetrator. I think this is a really good round. If I wanted some penetration capability and I was budget minded, I would probably go with uh, some green tip and then mixed in with the Mark 318. So you got so if you're shooting controlled pairs, you got some penetration here if you felt like you needed it, but you also know that you're going to get, if you're hitting soft tissue, soft flesh, you're going to get a 62 grain open tip match or penetrator. This stuff does very well against glass. They call it the barrier blind round. It does well against glass, windshields, things like that. So when it hits the windshield, it generally stays accurate and it's not going to bounce or turn or, or flip or any of that. So it's supposed to be barrier blind. I think it's a good round, but probably it's not definitely not my favorite. And let's see. Oh, here we go. 
What I have here is some IMI 77 grain. You can choose the brand, whatever brand you feel like is the most accurate. I like this stuff. It's a uh, hollow point uh, boat tail match. It's, a, it's 77 grain Sierra Match King. That's, that's what they're using. And, and it's very accurate stuff. It's going to be hard hitting. It's going to hit a lot harder than 62 grain or 55 grain stuff. You're going to get the hollow point, so it's going to do very well against soft tissue. And it doesn't do too bad against barriers, light barriers, like little cement block walls, things like that. What I use this for is for my SPR, shooting long range. It's very accurate. I get well under, you know, three-quarter inch group sometimes with this if I'm really sitting down on a bench and a vise and concentrating. So accuracy, range is very good on this. And especially right now in today's market where some of this stuff is going for 75, 80 cents a round. Are you kidding me? Why buy that when you can get this? Now, you need to pay attention to the twist rate on your barrel. You want something somewhere around 1 in 7, 1 in 8 twist rate. That's, that's pretty common. And that's what you're going to need to stabilize this. I even think, uh, yeah, so Sierra Match King even recommends it. Uh, 7 to 8 inch twist rate barrels only. So it's going to stabilize it well. If that's what you got. If you're at one and nine, you probably want to step down to the 55 grain. You'll probably that'll probably be the most effective on a one and nine. Now, if you're running some type of 10 inch barrel, would I use this? Probably not. I mean, yeah, it'll hit harder, but then if you have to reach out, you're already shortening your barrel, which is going to kill your range. But trying to stabilize this round, even at the maximum extent you would get on a 10 inch barrel with some 62 grain stuff it's going to be real hard to stabilize this so I would probably run this 16 inch barrel or higher and instead of spending 80 cents around for this stuff right now I would definitely run this so the last round and my favorite is going to be the M855A1 now this is some pretty bad stuff everything that I've read and all the tests that I've seen, it's got improved range, improved accuracy, heavily improved over the M855 SS109, the older green tip ammo, as far as penetration. I think the SS109 is about half the weight of what this arrowhead is on these rounds. These are very expensive, very, very expensive. I mean, you're looking at shooting Barrett stuff. Uh, 50 cal stuff at the price you got to pay for these right now because it's just not out there in the civilian market It wasn't made for that. It was made for you know to go to, to, go to war with right so they're not releasing this stuff There's not they're still they're still holding tight to some of the information that, that that's out there on the on this round so I Love this stuff. There's a few things that I don't like about it one The feed ramp issue you need to run the okay improved magazines or enhanced magazines and you need you need to run the gen 3 magpul magazines with this or else you will eat up your feed ramp i've seen some tests where some people were using m2 mags and they were pretty successful with it but if i was going to stockpile this i would definitely upgrade to probably magpul's gen 3 mags just to run this the other thing that i've personally noticed myself is sometimes you see how these look a little frosty so there is an issue with these where they kind of corrode. Now, you're not getting that pitting corrosion or whatever, but if you ever mess with stripper clips and you've seen, they, they kind of get this white, you know, frost on them, but it's, it's a little bit of corrosion or the powder they put it on it. It almost looks like that. If you ever did any time on boats and seen how salt, what it does to metal and aluminum, that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like what salt does to aluminum. Now you can mitigate this by taking some oil, not gun cleaner, stripper, copper, bore cleaner. You don't want to use any of that. Just use some hoppies or rem oil, some standard oil, and clean them up. I would take them off of the stripper clips. The stripper clips tend to rust too. I mean, to me, stripper clips are outdated. I, I can't stand them. So rip these off. Loose pack them in ammo can. Make sure you clean them up a little bit. Just the tips on the oil, making sure you're not getting into the primer area. Light coat of oil, just rub them off real quick with oil, and you'll be good to go. Overall, love this round. It's very, very expensive. It's not something that you want to go you know, blast holes with and squeeze triggers with at the range, but you definitely need to test it out, right? And at $3, $4 a round, you better have some deep pockets. So 
You can probably find this stuff. It is out there. You just got to look hard enough. Gun broker, things like that. Maybe the, the best combo, I think, if you don't want to just completely go crazy with this, and let's say you're going to get a couple hundred rounds just to have your mags ready or whatever, what I would probably do, if it was me, I think the best combo, even though this stuff is excellent against soft tissue and it's excellent against barriers, what I would probably run, you know, and you have to test this out of your gun to make sure that you're not losing a lot of accuracy or you're not getting a zero shift. But what I would probably do is I would run the Marine Corps round, right, the Mark 318, and then I would probably run the M855A1, and I'd stagger it in the mag, so open tip match rear pe penetrator, boom, next round is um, M855A1, and I would just alternate them all the way up the mag, and that way when you're shooting and you're doing controlled pairs, some people call it a double tap, but when you're shooting controlled pairs at a target, you know that you're going to get a good penetrating round and you're going to get a good flesh eating round. You've got to test it out in your barrel to make sure you're not getting that point of aim, point of impact shift. But overall, I think that is the best cocktail or combo that you can get mass produce. I know there's some hunting rounds out there that are very good, some home defense 223 rounds out there that are very good, some FBI rounds that are bonded, very good. But overall, my go-to is going to be the M855A1 and the open tip match rear penetrator. And for a budget, if I couldn't get any of this stuff and I could find it, what I would get is the Gold Bear hollow point. I think overall cost versus what you're getting, I think this is the best bang for your buck. All right, appreciate you watching YouTube. Hopefully I didn't bore you with all this. I am by no means an expert and I'm very interested to know what your rounds are. And for you AK guys, I'm very interested to know what you got there and what you're running there. So let me know what your mags are jammed with for when the boogaloo happens. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, comment, and if you haven't, subscribe.